Hello again guys, it's me Unstable Voltage and welcome back to another episode of How to Feed the Beast in Horizons. In today's video we're going to be looking at our first machine blocks from the Rotary Craft mod. In fact we're going to be building two, they both work together and the idea of these machines is to produce ethanol. Ethanol is a fuel source which we'll be using to power some of the more complicated engines later on. To make the ethanol we're going to need this block here, the fermenter. The fermenter's only real job is to convert sugar, dirt and plant matter down into ethanol. The fermenter also needs a supply of water. That's where this block comes in, the pump. We can supply water manually to the fermenter, but it's much easier if we pump it in from a water source using the pump. They're very easy to make, we've got all of the materials that we need to put them together, so let's head on over to the workshop and start the process. Okay then guys, so let's start off by taking a look at what we're going to need for this little project. You're going to need quite a few HSLA steel ingots, which you can make by putting lead into your blast furnace. We covered that in the first tutorial. You're going to need some glass blocks, a minimum of nine. You're going to need at least two levers or redstone torches, a couple of DC electric engines, which we also built in the last video. And I would also get yourself a stack of sugar, dirt and plant matter, so saplings will be absolutely fine and we can use those to make our ethanol. So, first steps, let's go over to our crafting bench. The first thing we want to make is the fermenter. Now the fermenter requires a few things. First of all, it requires an impeller. Now if you don't know how to make an impeller, you place four steel ingots, sorry, five steel ingots in the crafting table in a cross, and that will give you three HSLA steel gears. I'm just going to say steel gears from now on because it's easier. Put one of those steel gears back in the center of the crafting table and put another steel ingot top, bottom, left and right and that will give you an impeller. That is the first part of the fermenter. You're also going to need four base panels. Base panels are made by placing three steel ingots in a horizontal row. That will actually give you three, we only need four. And the recipe for the fermenter is very easy. The impeller goes in the middle, actually we need to be doing this at our work table. The impeller goes in the middle, the base panels, four of them, top, bottom, left and right. And then we also need our steel ingots again in the remaining four corners. And that will give us our fermenter. So we already have our first item, very easy to build, very simple and relatively cheap. So. Let's move on to the second item on the agenda. So in order to get our pump to work, we're going to need to make some liquid pipes. Liquid pipes can transport either water or lava. So we're going to go over to our work table and we're going to take three glass blocks and put them in a vertical column down the middle of the work table. And then on the left and right hand sides, we are going to put a uh, column each of steel ingots and that will actually give us 16 blocks of liquid pipe. So it is a very generous recipe. So now we have our liquid pipe. One thing we're also going to need for the pump is a glass pane. In order to make a glass pane, you're going to need six more glass blocks and put them in this configuration in the crafting table. So two horizontal rows and you actually get 16 panes. We only need one, but uh, unfortunately that's just how many it's going to make for us. So now we're going to go over to the work table and put the pump together. Now we are going to need another impeller for the pump. Same as last time, we've already got ourselves a spare gear. Steel ingots on the top, bottom, left and right will give us a, another impeller. Now we've got all the ingredients we need, we can go back to our work table. So, as before, the impeller goes in the middle. We take our glass pane and that goes in the top middle so we can actually see into the top of the pump. We need two base panels, we've got a couple left over here, so we're going to put those in the bottom corners, left and right. Two more steel ingots in the top left and right corners, and then we're going to take three of our liquid pipes and fill in the remaining three slots. And that will give us our pump. So, now we have our fermenter and we have our pump, we're going to go and put them together. You're also probably going to need your screwdriver for this, which we also covered in the last video. So, let's pop downstairs and put these in place. Okay guys, so I've got a little space down here ready to put my fermenter in place. Now, if you actually have a look in your Rotary Craft handbook and look under the production machines, 
The third item down is the fermenter. If you go to the second page, it will tell you that the power required is 1024 watts, which is what our DC electric engine produces, and it requires a speed of 32 radians per second. Well, the DC electric engine puts out 256, so it is more than enough. Extra speed will increase the production rate of the fermenter, but most importantly, the power input is at the back. So I'm going to take my fermenter, I'm going to pop it down here, so the front is facing towards me, and that gives me a little space here under the stairs to put my engine. Now as you can see, there's a hole in the back of the fermenter, and that is where the power is going to connect. Okay, so I'm going to take one of my DC electric engines and I'm going to place that under the stairs. Now, as you can see, the red block is facing towards me. You can see the shaft on the DC electric engine, which means it's facing the wrong way. I want that to go into the back of the fermenter. So I'm going to use my screwdriver and right click on the motor. You can see now it's facing that way. And now the red block is over the fermenter. That motor is now facing the right way. So let's take one of our levers and I'm going to pop that down right next to the motor or the DC electric engine. Now if I switch the switch on, you can hear the engine start. If we actually look at the fermenter, you can see here that we have power, speed and torque. So it's receiving enough power from the uh, motor. So let's turn the engine off already. So if we have a little look here in the fermenter and let's have a look at the input slots and what we can do with it. So there we go, the power is dying out. That should quieten down soon. So the first thing you will see here on the fermenter uh, interface is the info panel on the left hand side. If you click that it will take you to the fermenter page in your Rotarycraft guide. We have a temperature gauge here on the left. Now, the fermenter works most efficiently in moderate temperatures. If it's very cold or if it's very hot, then the yeast will start to die off and you won't produce things as quickly. So you want to put the fermenter somewhere that has a moderate temperature. We have three input uh, slots here in the center. The middle one is for water. You can put water into the fermenter using buckets, but we're going to be pumping the water in directly, hence the pump. And then there is a top slot and a bottom slot for the two items needed to produce what we're going to output. Now the fermenter to make ethanol is a two-stage process, but the first thing we're going to need is water. Water is needed for both of them. So let's go and put our pump in place. So what I've done here is a little room next door. You can see this hole in the wall. And what we have here is a 4x4 four four water source. So if we have a look in our Rotary Craft Handbook, and we're just going to go through and find the pump. There we go, on production machines, it is at the bottom. We're going to go on to the second page. You can see it requires 1,024 watts of power, which is fine because that's what our DC electric engines output. But it also says that the power input is front or back. So again, that's one of the important things. So what we're going to do is we are going to place our pump down here over one of the water tiles. Now you can see these two green blocks. One is in front of me and one that's gone through the wall. That is the front and back, which is the areas you can connect the engine to. If you actually look through the glass pane in the top of the pump, you can actually see the direction uh, of the gear inside. You can see the impeller. So we're going to use our screwdriver and turn it 90 degrees. So now you can see we have the front or back on either side of it. So we're going to take our second DC electric engine, place it down here, and again it's the wrong way, so we'll turn that around with the screwdriver, and now the engine is connected to the pump. We're going to place down another one of our levers, and if we turn that lever on, you'll see that the engine has started, the impeller is going in the pump, the pump is full of water, and you can see that it is taking away blocks of water. Now, because this is a 4x4, four four, or sorry, a 2x2 two two block of water source blocks, it's an infinite water source, and it will never run out. So, we're going to turn that off. We are going to take our liquid pipes. Now, in order to connect the liquid pipes to the pump, they have to be connected from one of the four sides, not from the top. From the top, they will not connect. So I'm going to channel these water pipes along through the wall, 
and connect them into the top of my fermenter. Now the way liquid pipes work in rotary craft is they do build up pressure. So putting additional power and, uh, into the pump will give you additional pressure, which means even when the engine's not running, there's still enough pressure in the pipe to supply water. So you can see here that the fermenter is now full with water. So the first stage is to make yeast. To make yeast, you're going to need a stack of sugar in the top slot and a stack of dirt in the bottom slot. Let's turn the engine on. And you can see on the front we have a blue and green light which indicates that the fermenter is working. And you can also see that very, very quickly it is turning that sugar into yeast. Okay, so the lights have gone off on the front of the fermenter. It has used up all the sugar, so I'm going to remove the dirt. And we have a stack of 64 yeast. We still have full water even though the pump isn't actually running because there's still enough pressure in the pipe. So the next stage is to go back to the fermenter, place the yeast in the top slot and some plant matter, in this case saplings, in the bottom slot and that will start to produce sludge. So let's leave that to produce. Okay, so the fermenter has finished processing those ingredients. I've also turned off the engine because they're really loud and noisy. So as you can see, we still actually have full water, despite the fact that the pump hasn't been ran during that entire process, so there was a lot of pressure left in that pipe. And as you can see, we now have a stack of 64 sludge. So when you're making yeast, it requires 64 sugar to make 64 yeast, but you will have some dirt left over, so it doesn't always use a dirt block. And when you're creating the sludge, it will use one plant matter for each one of the sludge, but it won't always use a yeast. So we now have 64 sludge. Now, there is one other thing that is worthy of note with the fermenter. You see over here in this right-hand corner, we have a little icon that says this controls automation. Currently, it is showing the icon for yeast. If we were to put another redstone power source next to it, we'll just do this with a lever. As you can see, it's still on yeast. If we apply a redstone signal, and then look, it now has changed to sludge. Take that redstone signal away, and it has gone back to yeast. And that is for automation. If you're pumping materials into the fermenter, you can have it so you can switch between which item it produces by putting a redstone signal to it. So now we have our sludge, there's only one thing left to do and that's head over to the furnace. So here we are, a standard furnace, we're just going to put the sludge in the top with some coal for fuel, give it a few seconds and there we go, we have our first lot of ethanol crystals which we can use to power some of the more exotic engines later on in the mod. So guys, there you have it, our first two machines from the Rotary Craft mod, the fermenter and the pump. We now have a means of building Rotary Craft items, we have a way to power Rotary Craft items, and we have built our first two machines. So I hope as always you found this video informative and entertaining, and if you have, please remember to like, share and subscribe because it really helps the channel to grow and I can continue to produce these videos. So until next time, goodbye for now.